Hello InfoPerson, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing this relatively new and very interesting study, or actually a meta-analysis involving several studies, that discovers something that a lot of scientists have been speculating for a long time now. The idea that the tides from the moon and also the sun do actually have a relatively strong influence on various types of behavior in animals and in plants. Or in other words, that the tides that you see right here don't just change the levels of water on planet Earth, but they also affect the behavior in various species on the planet, including to some extent us. But that's obviously something that's not new and that has been explored before. So let's actually talk a little bit more about what this paper discovered so far and what this means for our understanding of how life evolved on planet Earth. But first, a little story from CERN, the largest particle accelerator on the planet. As the name implies, the particle accelerator essentially accelerates particles at extremely high speeds and then collides them, observing the results. But these types of collisions can only occur when the actual proton beams, the beams of particles, are extremely well aligned with one another in order for them to basically hit each other. And if they are misaligned by even a fraction of a nanometer, this can actually create a bit of a problem. The problem being that not as many collisions will be observed. Now, in the last decade or so, since about 2009, this particular experiment, the Atlas experiment, has been essentially the largest general purpose experiment when it comes to particle collision. And it's actually one of the main experiments that discovered the so-called Higgs boson back in 2012. But during some of the initial stages of testing for this experiment, some of the scientists realized that occasionally, or actually very periodically, there will be a dramatic drop of particle collisions for one reason or another. And though at first it was sort of mysterious, the scientists pretty quickly realized that it was actually because of the tides coming from the moon itself. And so as of today, a lot of the experiments in the particle collider have to take the lunar tides into consideration when essentially measuring various collisions of various particles. But in retrospect, it shouldn't really come as a surprise. These machines are so sensitive that they should be detecting tides from a lot of different objects in the solar system. Especially considering that a typical tide from the moon, for example, can actually shift the levels of water on planet Earth by quite a few meters or quite a few feet. But what about other things? What about life on Earth? What effect do tides have on us and everything around us? Well, I guess before we can answer that question, let's actually go through just a tiny demonstration of what a typical tide can do. So this right here is a tide from a black hole. It can typically shred an entire star in a relatively short time leaving almost nothing behind except for some dust here and there. So that's of course tidal disruption from a black hole, usually referred to as TDE or tidal disruption event. But here on Earth we generally only talk about two different tides, the one caused by the moon, which you can see demonstrated in this particular image, and a slightly less powerful coming from the sun as well. So in essence there are actually two different pools at all times, and sometimes they are on opposite sides, that's of course when we get something like the full moon, so basically the moon is on the opposite side from the sun, and sometimes they reinforce each other when both the moon and the sun are on the same side. And this is sort of demonstrated right here in this image. So as you can see, there are essentially four different types of tides. And there is of course quite a lot of anecdotal evidence for strange behavior in humans during, for example, full moon. Although most of it over the past few years has usually been attributed to a lot of other sources, even the antiquated term lunacy previously has been used to describe strange behavior in humans because of different phases of the moon. This is not really used today anymore simply because we have a much better understanding of different types of mental disorders. But interestingly enough, several studies did actually find some effects that the moon seems to cause even on us, on humans. Most of these effects seem to be related to sleep though, and that's really interesting because it looks like when we're conscious, the moon doesn't really have much effect on us at all. But when we start to fall asleep and when we do sleep, that's when things become a little bit different. So for example, in this study right here from approximately 8 years ago, the scientists discovered that during the full moon, or basically when you have the moon on the other side from the sun and when the tides are not as strong, on average people took roughly around 5 minutes longer to fall asleep but also slept for about 20 minutes less overall. And also during the full moon, the delta activity measured by the EEG, and that's something that happens during deep sleep, decreased by about 30%, which in short suggests that our sleep quality during full moon is actually not as good as it would be otherwise. And also we don't seem to get as much rest during this period. 
or at least that's the results from the subjects in the study. Obviously, it's not clear if it applies to everyone on the planet. With some other changes also involving the uh, levels of melatonin, or the sleep hormone, all of this suggesting that people just don't seem to rest as well during the full moon. This, of course, could potentially affect their behavior afterwards. And by the way, all of these studies generally control for things like light, things like diet and so on, so this is really just the effects from something that's invisible to us, essentially the tides. But considering that these effects are like one millionth the strength of the actual gravity coming from planet Earth, how exactly would this work? And more importantly, are we consciously aware of this? Well, the answer to the last question is of course no. It looks like we don't feel this, but it still affects us in some way. And a lot of the research suggests that it's not just us, obviously. It's a lot of different animals that seem to rely on different rhythmic activities. For example, in one of the oldest studies on this topic from back in 1965, the study of different types of crustaceans discovered that the swimming patterns in these creatures usually followed a very specific cycle of about 12.4 hours aligned with the cycle of the moon. But interestingly, this was also happening when these creatures were put in a smaller fish tank where there was no tidal motion of water itself. In other words, they exhibited very similar swimming patterns despite the fact that the water itself was not moving at all. Then this other study involving coral discovered that the growth and larval production of the coral were matching the local gravitational tides from the influence of the moon and the sun. And more recently, in 2014, this study right here investigated the seed germination in sunflowers, discovering that the way that the seeds germinate, or basically the way that they create the plant itself from the seed, seems to be in cycle with the tides from the moon. And this was despite the fact that the light itself was artificial, there was no moonlight, and the temperature, pressure, and humidity was controlled as well. With all of this implying that a lot of rhythmic behavior or a lot of behavior that's cyclical in nature might actually be, to some extent, controlled by the tides from the moon and possibly the sun as well. And moreover, a lot of these oscillations might then also create a lot more complex behavior as a result. And naturally, because this is something that's been going on on the planet for billions of years, you would expect a lot of organisms to evolve to maybe somehow use these oscillation patterns to their advantage. So none of this should really come as a surprise, but I guess the actual effects at the moment are not really known, especially when it comes to slightly more complex creatures like us. We obviously have no idea if there are any other additional effects that a typical tide would have on us. But when it comes to these discoveries, you still have to be a little bit careful, especially from, I guess, biases in general. In some cases, a lot of these discoveries could be caused by something entirely different. At the moment, the ones seen in these studies seem to be related to the moon and the actual tides. But in some other cases, it can actually be caused by something entirely different, including something in the experimental design itself. And one of the main reasons we have to be careful is because people might then start applying a lot of this to human behavior. And as of today, except for the sleep studies, there doesn't actually seem to be any effect from the tides on our own behavior. Even though it decreases the levels and quality of sleep, in terms of behavior, it doesn't really change much. And so that's why I still have to be kind of careful when talking about this, so that people don't basically jump to wrong conclusions. These are fascinating topics, it's actually a really interesting discovery, but for now these discoveries are still so much circumstantial, and there basically needs to be a lot of done in terms of different experimental designs to conclusively prove some of these suggestions. At the moment it does seem quite likely, but we never know. Well, until further studies or until something else exciting is discovered in regards to tides, at least for now, that's kind of all I wanted to mention. Check out the relevant links in the description below, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.